What does it mean to remember on Remembrance Day? I don't know. I don't know. I don't really know. Why do we remember? November 11th could be just any other day. Another day where we go about our busy lives, rushing to class or to work or to reach for another coffee so we can make it through till tomorrow. Why do we remember? How can we remember something that feels so distant from today? In the busyness of it all, it's not hard to feel detached from what happened 100 years or 70 years or 50 or 20 years ago or even today halfway across the world. It's so easy to forget what's happening right now. How can we remember something that's so easy to forget? The answer is, we can't forget. For the sake of those that sacrificed and are sacrificing their lives for us, for those before us and those after, we cannot forget. That is why we remember. Why do we remember World War I? 1914 marked the start of the First World War. It was so long ago, and yet was such a significant point in time for our history. The world's history. During the First World War, there were many casualties. Over 425,000 Canadian troops were deployed overseas in Europe. More than 60,000 of those soldiers lost their lives fighting for us. Fighting for Canada. Fighting for the world. The Canadians were considered the most feared fighting force in the war, due to their ability to win battles where success seemed impossible. And that's really all this time period was. Impossible. Impossible to believe. Impossible to comprehend how much was really lost. However, it can be impossible in another way. As long as we remember, it will be impossible to forget. On November 11th, we remember those who battled for our freedom in World War I. On the afternoon of Sunday, May the 2nd, the second battery was being strafed heavily. Lieutenant Alex Helmer had just left his bunk when en route he was hit with an 8-inch and blown to pieces. Shortly after the strafing had stopped, a few men went out and dug a grave in the burial grounds. The rest of the men went around and picked up as many pieces as they could find, putting them into sandbags and then putting the sandbags onto a military blanket in the shape of a body. Then John McRae and a small group of men went to the burial grounds and recited the famous burial service. I am the resurrection and the life. John McRae was terribly moved by this. Alex Helmer had always been a close friend of his. So then he sat at the ambulance, staring at the grave, and wrote the original version of In Flanders Fields. I was a soldier not too long ago, back in December of 1941, battling the German forces. I had two good friends while serving, one captured and taken to Auschwitz, the other brutally shot up in combat. That was a life for a young man back then. 
once you were able to stand up on your own two feet by yourself, it was time to go. I still remember those nights, flicking my Zippo lighter to pass the time. Those were endless nights. The battles were brutal. Hearing gunshot after gunshot after gunshot. Explosion after explosion after explosion. That's why we remember. No In the year 51, they shipped me off to Korea. Every day I'd walk into first aid and there'd be blood. Blood, the sweet lifeline, I've become immune to it. I patched up hundreds upon hundreds of soldiers, pulling bullets from limbs, removed shrapnel from bodies. When the ceasefire was announced, the nursing sisters worked their hardest to restore the soldiers. Bloody, disembodied, and battered, but some we just couldn't save. Fifty years later, I still see the soldiers lying on the gurneys while their heart rate slows to nothing. These daunting, terrifying images still haunt me at night. She woke up on the right side of the bed, grabbed her teddy cradled it to her head. She sighs, it was just a bad dream. She starts brushing her hair and then mommy runs in. Eyes bright face, flushed heart pounding, mommy, what's the matter? And she hears it, the sound of planes flying overhead. You see, every time she hears that sound, her heart shatters because now it's not a dream. It's not in her head. She looks to her little brother, his eyes bright with fear and she knows it's real. The explosions are getting closer now. So she grabs her daddy with one arm and her teddy in the other. The ground began to rumble. The walls began to crumble and it all came tumbling down like a nightmare out of a story, but this was no Brothers Grimm. Hours. Relief fade, aided after hours, her mother, brother, ashes, flashes, it's all flashes now, flashes of memories, flashes of yelling, where's daddy? Daddy's no more. This house is no more, everything's no more. We have to leave, cries mommy. But there's nowhere to go. There's nowhere to go. Syrian government airstrike kills 85 people in Aleppo. We hear headlines like this daily, and usually we just think, how sad. That's too bad, and then change the channel to something happier. But those 85 people couldn't change the channel, neither could the 300 others that were injured in the same airstrike. Those 385 people weren't terrorists. They weren't rebels. They were mothers, fathers, brothers, and daughters, people bombed by their own government and relief aid sent by ours. Right now, there are 61.3 million forcibly displaced people worldwide. 61.3 million stories of pain, anguish, suffering, more loss than we can possibly comprehend. 61.3 million who can't change the channel. We remember our soldiers. We remember those who are risking their lives to save innocent civilians. And we remember the mothers and brothers and fathers and daughters, people who are shot, bombed, left for dead with no place to go. We remember. And we aren't changing the channel.
In Flanders' fields the poppies blow, between the crosses, row on row, that mark our place. And in the sky, the larks still bravely singing fly, scarce heard amid the guns below. We are the dead, short days ago. Take up our quarrel with the foe, to you from failing hands we throw, the torch be yours to hold it high. If ye break faith with us who die, we shall not sleep, though poppies grow in Flanders' fields. Day. Remember the people that died for us in World War I. Remember those that fought in Vietnam. Remember the soldiers who fought in the Battle of D-Day. Remember those who fought and died in the Battle of Vimy Ridge. 
to remember the people that fought for our country. Because forgetting would be a disservice to those who lost their lives. To not let the soldiers' deaths be in vain. To remember the lives who were sacrificed for the good of our country.